Feast of the Epiphany. So Merry Christmas. Merry One more time. We would like to welcome our guests and visitors who are joining us. We're always happy to have visitors. How many of you may be visiting this morning? Raise your hands. Let us know who you are. A visitor here. One of our visitors. Welcome to our visitors. We've all come this morning. We are following the star. Did you see the star come in? Isn't that wonderful? We're like the Magi, following the light of the star. And so together, with Christmas joy, we make our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus, born in Bethlehem, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And brothers and sisters, we acknowledge today in a very special way this Feast of the Epiphany, Jesus is the light of the world. He is manifest, made known to all the world, all creation. Let's look into our hearts as we begin our prayer this morning as God's people. We acknowledge that at times we fail to honor our Lord Jesus, who is the light of our lives. He has changed the course of our world for the good. Let's ask God for mercy and forgiveness for the times that we have sinned. Lord Jesus, the light of your glory has appeared for all people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, forgive us when we do not offer you honor and homage. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, may all people, all nations praise you. As Lord and God, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life.
our own hearts. Let us pray. Lord God of all the nations, we have seen the star of your glory rising in splendor. The radiance of your incarnate word pierces the darkness that covers the earth and signals the dawn of peace and justice. Make radiant the lives of your people with that same brightness and beckon all the nations to walk as one in your light. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your word made flesh, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, in the splendor of eternal light, God forever and ever. Amen. I you please be seated. We prepare ourselves to listen to God's holy word. The prophet Isaiah uses the image of light and shining radiance to announce how visible God's glory is. Even amid the darkness of their exile in Babylon and the destruction of the temple, the Israelites await the hope of God's salvation coming into the world. Today we celebrate the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy as people from every nation come bearing gifts to pay homage to the newborn king of the Jews. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. Sea darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They will gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you, dromedaries from Midian and Ephah, all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. shall roll from sea to sea, 
from the river to the bounds of the
Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written to the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for since from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out, and behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. December 25th. This uh, Epiphany is one of three manifestations that the church celebrates. The Epiphany of Jesus, the arrival of, of the Magi following the star, um, the baptism of our Lord Jesus, and the wedding feast at Cana are all considered epiphanies, how Christ, as the Son of God, is manifest. Today we celebrate to the entire world. As we celebrate this feast day today, I'd like you to think about two objects you use very, very often. Object number one, the iPhone. <laughs> we use it all too often, don't we? However, think about how in the last 16, 17 years, it's changed our lives, the way we do things. With a simple iPhone in your hand, you can check the weather, you can uh, access mail, you can of course call people, send texts, you can look up something that you want to find out. Like before, we used to go to a place called the library and look at encyclopedias, and it's all accessible on your iPhone. You can find out if you want to go to church somewhere distant or if a guest is coming here, they use their iPhone, they plug in St. Andrew Marie Pacific Road, our website comes up, they can find out what time masses here. It's endless possibilities of information, opportunities to communicate. Think of how it's changed our lives. And what is the attraction? Sometimes we spend too much time on our iPhones scrolling and looking up things. What's the attraction? Light. It has a light force that when we put it in front of our psyches, the, our psyches enjoy the light. Object number two, something we don't even think about until we don't have it for a few minutes. The flick of a switch turns
turns on the lights. A light bulb. And a light bulb was invented about 150 years ago and began to transform society. The way people lived in their homes, how people were able to travel safely at night, how cities became illuminated much more brightly, and how society actually became safer. There was a drop in crime because the nighttime could be illuminated. You see, this is another small invention, but powerful presence in our lives that changes the way we do things, changes the way we approach life. My brothers and sisters, as we celebrate Epiphany, the manifestation of Jesus, the symbol of the manifestation is a star in the night sky that moves and leads the Magi to find the Christ child. I suggest to you this question. Having Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in our lives, has it changed the way we live, the way we see the world? Hopefully, this Christ Jesus, born in Bethlehem, has done just that. We notice the Magi go to the palace, interact with the king, but that's not where this newborn king of the Jews can be found. Where is he found? He's found in a home, in an ordinary home. The king of the Jews and the king of the universe is found in the midst of his family. Hopefully, we acknowledge this Jesus as did the Magi. They offer him gifts that, that acknowledge that he is a king, that he is God. Frankincense is an offering offered to the gods. And so we acknowledge that this king who rules our hearts, this God gives us the gift of his merciful love. Hopefully this has changed how we understand who God is. That's what this entire Christmas season is about. God is with us. God is in our hearts. God is in our homes. God is with us every moment of every day. And hopefully in the Christ, we absorb this into the marrow of our bones and are grateful to a God who meets us where we are, who meets us where we are. And this God merits our praise, our thanks, our homage. The second way I believe that Jesus has changed our lives is that he calls us to interact with one another with a great sense of goodwill. Jesus has come to rid the world of divisions, to rid the world of boundaries and social classes, that we're all children of one God, every man, woman, and child. We all belong to the family of God. Jesus is worshipped by strangers, by foreigners, but yet, because they are wise, they are learned, they take time to think about what this star can mean in their lives, they encounter Jesus, they come to find him. The journey of our lives is just that, that pursuing Christ and following him, we break, hopefully we break down barriers, when God sees the world, he doesn't see boundaries and countries. He sees the hope of a family united in his own love. As we come to the Lord's altar today, let's bring with us a sense of homage, a sense of gratitude for this gift that has been given to us and how this Christ has changed the way we see the world and live our lives. Hopefully, we see the world as God does. We see each other as God does. Brothers and sisters, friends, people of goodwill who work together and live together in peace, working for justice, working for a better world, acknowledging the kingdom that this Lord and God, this Christ, has come to break open in our midst. Amen. I invite you to please stand.
faith in our hearts and profess the faith of our baptism. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of all other for all ages, God and God, light and light, true God and true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all all things pray, for us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was in the heart of the prayer to Mary, and became man. For our sake He was crucified and born to Pilate, He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord that gives you our life, proceeds the Father and the Son, and the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism and forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. The light of the world to come. Amen. As a family of faith following Christ, the light from light, true God from true God, we now pray for the needs of our church and our entire world. Let us pray for the church that through our words and deeds we may be a light to all those who are searching for direction and a sign of hope for all those seeking to begin again. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for God's blessing on the new year, that God will fill this year with health of mind, body, and soul, renewing us to be a light for others. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for a deeper awareness of our gifts and talents, that like the Magi, we offer our gifts to God and embrace the diverse talents of others as we work together to build God's kingdom of peace and justice. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for a renewal of prayer in our lives, that we may take time at the end of each day and like the Magi, Seek out the Lord's presence. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As a family of disciples gathered around the table of the Eucharist and celebrating the light of the world, we remember the souls of Mary and Joe Pagnella, Margaret Eunice, Eunice Martin, and Joe Gabrielle, and Rebecca Vanessus. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy, today the light of your Son is shown for all the nations to see. Hear these prayers and help us to share your light with others by our compassion, forgiveness, and hope. All this we ask through the light of the world, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd like to please be seated as we continue our liturgy. This time we prepare to offer our gifts in thanksgiving to God. We're always grateful for the many ways you support our parish ministries. Thank you for your generosity. As we prepare our table, we will sing number 107, We Three Kings. 107.
my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all his holy church. Look with favor, Lord, we pray upon these gifts of your church, in which are offered now not gold, frankincense, and myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Angela Ricci, Unipur, Sarah, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to become heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
as together we sing the communion song. So please take out your breaking bread books and open to number 100, Cold Was the Stable, 101 Opal.
As you remain seated, we conclude our prayer. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. I believe we're expecting some visitors today on this Feast of the Epiphany. Open your books to 112. 112, the first Noel. The Magi have arrived here in Bethlehem. They have a little treat for you. Please take one and pass it along. Basket, uh, you can trade a little later. All right, so there's all different kinds of treats. So we'll sing this song, the first Noel, as we share in some Christmas joy.
very special thank you to all the different ministries that have made our Christmas season so rich. The leadership of Lana and Jordan, for our choir that's helped us celebrate uh, with wonder and beautiful music for all the ministers. If you need a star, Linda is right here. She's the star of the choir. We do have coffee and donuts. We welcome everyone to the library, especially our guests today. As you leave today, we have a special little house blessing. Take this card and read it. It tells you how to bless your home. And there is chalk that helps you to inscribe this inscription. 20 plus C plus M plus B plus 24. The initials of Caspar, Melchior, and Balthasar. Or the initials of Christus Mansionum Benedictum. God bless this house. So I'm going to model how you do this, or you can do it. As we leave today, I'm going to invite the children who are here, moms and dads, to follow me out the front door, around to the front library door, where we'll celebrate the blessing our church house together. I'm going to invite you all to please stand as we bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. And we respond to these prayers, amen. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out his kindness, his blessing upon you, and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in the darkness, may God make you, too, a light for your brothers and sisters. Amen. So when your pilgrimage on earth is ended, may you come to join him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star and whom they found with great joy, the light from light was Christ the Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. We go in Christmas joy. Thanks be to God. We go forth singing number 102. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. 102. Sing it out the last Christmas carol. Amen. 